Lord, it means a lot for me to be here today in your company at this very tragic time. Um, and I decided to share the words of British journalist and activist Ben White, who writes, who writes most brilliantly about Palestine and Israel. This was his Facebook status today. This is deeply personal, and I am a little nervous. A friend of mine told me earlier today that she had lost relatives in Gaza, killed by an Israeli attack overnight. The family were at home, the dead include children. What can we do, she said. I was speaking with my father, and we just feel helpless. There's nothing to say here. There is silence and a wait, or maybe there's an outpouring, a torrent of questions and demands, curses and clutching, grabbing words and screams that scrape and slice and remain hanging in an air heavy with guilt, grief, and rage. What is there to be done? We know of the bombs that fall through the roofs of Palestinian homes, of the children cut down in the streets. It is part of a long history, and which in itself is a part of a bigger story, one that stretches back into the distant past and is also the dark but certain promise of the future. The scorched village and shelled suburb, the slaughtered tribe, the father who beats his children, the police officer who shoots the dark skinned youth, the governments who stand on the hands of poor executive who fires thousands in the name of restructuring. I will tell you something. There was a time when I thought, for reasons I do not need to explain, that life was no longer worth living. When darkness consumed light and there was no way out. When the footsteps were heavy and my breathing labored and my heart broken. When I began to emerge from my own personal darkness, the speckles of light fell in unexpected places, the feel of a leaf on my fingers, or the white glow of the moon. When you've been there, been to the bottom and end of it all, the way back up takes you past bird song and children's laughter, and you realize that you will never go back there again. Why? Because there has been a glimpse of a truth, a reality, that stands irrespective of one's beliefs in the material and beyond the material. The heart-pounding resonance of smells, sights, and sounds of beauty being offered and receiving love in all its forms and a knowing kind of joyousness, a greediness to make the most of the time we have on this earth. None of us can individually force rulers and presidents to do our bidding. For most of us, we will not petition the king, still less overturn the throne. But this is only one kind of power. We have the power to build and construct, educate and inspire, unearth and discover, to play and to celebrate. We have the power to organize and to fight, to plan and plot. There is power in laughter and embrace, as well as clenched fists and marches. Brecht described art as a hammer with which to shape reality. I think it is much broader than that. We have those tools from the moment we wake up to the moment we go to sleep. They are even present in our dreams. 